recording. Okay, we're recording. I'm here with Shannon and we're about to go live on the YouTubes. Not YouTubes, Facebook. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, so let me see. Um, go live on Facebook. What is live on Workplace by Facebook? I don't know how to do all this stuff. Okay. Well, okay. You know Choose where you want to post your live video. Um, share it to newsfeed. Okay. There's usually a little bit of a delay. So, you know, I wonder, will this go on mine as well? Um, I will have to tag you. Let me see if it will let me. And tag. you know what? I think I have like a tag thing where I have to okay it. Shoot. That's okay. It'll all be fine. Okay. People can watch It'll it. be fine. Oh gosh. This is so fancy. I don't even know what to say. Okay. Um, title the sacred there's a delay the sacred technology of transfer oh you can't hear me it's okay hold on transformational handwriting okay shannon poppy is it gonna let is it gonna bring your name up hold on oops Hang with us, folks. Here we go. Okay, go live. All right. Hang tight, Shannon. This is like getting ready in the cockpit to take off. All right, awesome. Okay. And pulled up. <laughs> okay, let's see if we're live. Okay, it says we're live. Okay, there's a little bit of delay, so I'm gonna go over back to my Zoom screen. Okay, hi. Hi, how's it going? Like, it's great, this is so good. I'm glad, I love it when technology works. Um, okay, let me see if it's going. Yes, it says we're live. Okay, cool. Okay, hi everybody. Hi, Shannon. <laughs> hi, Elizabeth. Thank you so much for having me. Oh my gosh, girl, it is my pleasure. This is fun. This is so fun. Okay, so um, if y'all follow me and you know my podcast, The Spiritually Savvy Nurse, last Friday, I shared the interview with Miss Shannon Poppy of The Choice is Yours, LLC. <laughs> and um, we were just chatting before this, and this podcast has the most downloads of any of my shows so far. So clearly, we have sparked something, right, Shannon? And um, we were talking about how even though people think they know what you do, they don't really know what you do. And so it was an opportunity, right, for even your friends and family to like really hear what you do. And why don't you tell people what you do for those ha who haven't listened to the podcast yet, a little bit about what you do and we'll go from there. Okay, great. Well, really, it's like my honor and my joy to share what I've learned through transformational handwriting with the Vimola system. Um, I used to tell people that I taught the Vimala alphabet and I think it kind of was like, wait, what, what kind of alphabet? And is it so different? Is it like learning a new language? I think that kind of um, seemed overwhelming to people when I worded it that way. So, you know, when I talk about change, teaching transformational handwriting, then it's kind of like, oh, okay, well, what's that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's just some really cool thing that like we were talking about, Elizabeth, it's this tool that you can use in the privacy of your own home at your own speed, at your own pace. And um, what I share with people is the sacred technology of the handwriting system. Lots of things like from margins and slants and lines and things like that to the specific meaning of each letter of our alphabet. You know, other alphabets we know have meaning like um, in Hebrew or Chinese or whatever, they kind of tell a story every letter. And I didn't know it before, but our alphabet is actually no different. Each letter has its own um, very sacred soul-based quality, a quality to each and every letter of the alphabet. And, and when we learn how to inscribe it in the correct, you know, in the specific manner, I should say, 
that it was intended to be inscribed to generate the energy of that letter because it's a it's a living thing. I mean, this, these letters have power and vibration and they come alive with intent when we form them in a special way. And because our handwriting is a graphic representation of how we think, our thought process, our subconscious minds, that stuff we don't always know that's going on, um, we can change that by changing the way we write. So I talk a lot about overcoming fears and anxieties because that's what interested me to get me to sign up and and start changing my handwriting. And I just love it. And um, and in my experience, it's been awesome and amazing. And in yeah, everybody I worked with has felt something. So I'm thrilled well, to share it. Thank you for sharing that, Shannon. And I remember um, specifically when we were recording the show, when you said um, your handwriting is a graphical representation of your subconscious. Mm -hmm. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> because as an energy healer, teacher, um, Anytime you start talking about the subconscious and you start talking about reprogramming and you talk about sacred, any transformation, I was like, where do I sign up? <laughs> <laughs> because it is, it is awesome. So let's talk a little bit about um, uh, your teacher, Vimla Rogers, right? And um, so just to clarify, the, the Vimla alphabet or the letters mm -hmm. are are a certain design right there are certain absolutely tell, tell us a little bit about that because that i want to know a little bit more about that yes absolutely well so there is a you know like we i learned i think in school the denelian system or there's usually the denelian or there's the palmer i don't know if you remember what you learned in school I don't even remember what it was called. So, so that's right. cool. I didn't, well, well, I didn't remember, remember cursive. Like, yeah. Well, I remember sitting in class and it usually was like all the way around the top of the room. Like yeah. every letter and it was, however, those were the two most popular that I think were taught in all the schools. I don't, I should research that before I say it because I don't know, but yeah. Um, so this would be called the Vimala alphabet. Like that's the Danelian. This is the Palmer. This is the Vimala. They're all alphabeticians that create these alphabets for us to learn and for us to use to communicate with by writing, right? However, Dr. Vimala Rogers is the only master alphabetician that's ever specifically designed an alphabet to bring forth the best characteristics and traits in the writer. And um, even though we all learn the same way of shaping the letter, just like we did in school, we all learn the same way, you know, by fifth grade, seventh grade, we had really different styles, right? There was mm -hmm. people give it their own twist and their own. And, um, and this is no different. It's just, it's like learning anything. There's a base, there's a, a foundation that you need to learn. And then, you know, you can still tell people's handwriting styles when you look at it, even though we're saying, um, you know, this is the way to inscribe this letter. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'll just give you an example. if yeah. I can. So I'm thinking that in the alphabet, there's two mosts that just pop out in my head. A is the most spiritual and H is the most dynamic. They're both super powerful energy propelling letters. And the A. Cool. Yeah. So the A is, is shaped like this. This is called the star A. Oh, I love the way that looks. Yeah. And it feels different because, you know, a lot of us learn to do our A's the circular way, just like the lowercase A, only That's larger way cooler a well and and the circle in is about ego and, and you know makes us fear you know not fearful i shouldn't say that word but concerned with maybe what we look like what we sound like that outer stuff mm -hmm. this is called a spirit a because it lets spirit drive the bus <laughs> Boy, and, <I> got angel. <laughs> and you start with this um it's called a lincoln foot because abraham lincoln signed his name like this and you go up and you have this like inverted V, which a V means spiritual discernment. And then you have this horizontal loop, which declares and nothing will stop me. So it's transforming ego into spirit and nothing will stop it. So that, that, that loop also reminds me, um, to me, that reminds me of um, like that fish symbol and also like part of the infinity symbol. Yes, yes. And I'm sure because those are symbolism as well. Mm -hmm. And um, so well, you can feel the energy of that, right? Like, yeah, and that's just an example. And so when you write that on paper, 
take your finger. I mean, these are, they're kinetic, they're kinesthetic. They live in our body. The energy that's created from it is amazing and powerful. And each letter has its own story like that. Its own soul-based quality that comes forth in us when we write it. And um, it supports that. You know, that's why in the podcast, I was saying this is about handwriting that supports us and handwriting that maybe doesn't support us. It's not about penmanship. People, you know, Mm. want, a lot of people think it's about penmanship and teaching penmanship. And if you're handwriting, you think it looks better after learning this, awesome. But it's really about bringing forth the energy and the quality that each letter holds, which is like this cool mystery. You know, it could be like unlock the mystery and the meaning of each incredible letter of our alphabet. Well, I wanna, um, that brings up a great question. Um, Can you talk a little bit about how um, how writing in print is literally like putting a fence around your heart because we talked about this on the show and it's like, and I said, you gotta get in the schools. We gotta have a cursive, we gotta have a Vimala camp for kids because, you know, forget even, forget even printing. Kids are not writing at all. They're just, well, so are adults, right? Um, so talk a little bit about like, what is it about? I mean, you talked a little bit about the kinesthetics and the actual writing of the letters, specifically the Vimala letters. Uh, what is it about the printing that like puts a fence around our heart or like closes us off to the heart energy that, that you mm-hmm. talked about in the show? Yeah. Um, sorry, my cat's like walking around here now. <laughs> oh, of course. Cats love good vibes. Where's um, my, yeah. oh, my kitty's right here sleeping. Yeah. She's, so she's standing behind the computer. Um, yeah, it does. And it's, you know, it's because we literally draw from a different part of our brain. Mm. And when we print, yeah, you know, I know both hemispheres of your brain are always active, mm-hmm. but there's the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere really is fired up when we're temp typing and printing and texting and all that. And that is, you know, the analytical brain, the mm-hmm. side that figures things out and is kind of fight, flight, or flee that thing. And when you write in cursive, the minute you pick up your pen or wrap your fingers around that pen and start to write with that flow of cursive, what you have to do in your mind to even make that happen, fires up both hemispheres and pulls from this creative center which is what we tap into when we're painting a picture, playing music. And it, it just, it's heart, it connects to the heart. It, it harmonizes our heart and our mind and pulls and draws from this creative center where all the creativity is and really our connection to, you know, whatever you want to call it, uh, you know, creator universe, yeah. whatever people want to call it. I like to think of creativity and creator as one and the same because it's just that, amazing, unique quality that we all, you know, we can all tap into it by forming our A, let's say the same way, but what you get from it and what I get from it and what someone else gets from it will, will be different because it's, it'll be unique and specific to us. I love that about the, I mean, so it's basically, this is back, this is based in scientific, uh, I don't know, neurobiology, whatever this would be considered. Um, yeah, lots of research. Because, yeah. So of course, I love that being a scientist. I'm a nurse. Um, I love that. And I have to tell you, Shannon, that I am a printer and I journal every morning as part of my meditation the situation in the morning and um, journaling. And after our show, I was like, I'm going to try to write. <laughs> and like we talked about before we got on here, it was physically painful. And in my mind, I caught myself being like, oh my God, I can't believe how hard this is because I actually had to think about it. And so that was like the first experience. However, like, I don't know, a day or two later, this is like maybe TMI, but whatever. So my husband, (laughs) Dwayne, um, we make French press, you know, coffee in the morning. And for whatever reason, when he, um, when he mixes his coffee, it sounds really loud to me and it kind of annoys me, honestly. And I'm like, (laughs) he's like, clank, clank, clank. And, um, and so one morning I was like in the bedroom and I was journaling in cursive and he's like trying to get my attention. And he's like, Hey, Hey, you, <laughs> he's like, you didn't notice, you didn't notice the clanking of the coffee. And I was like, 
oh my god it's because i'm in the flow man i'm in here writing in cursive and i don't even know the the letters yet however i looked at my paper and when i first started it it was like it was like a shit show it was all like chaotic and then like by the third page it was literally like this yeah vibe and this flow and that's what i was feeling yeah because i didn't notice the clanging of the yeah the coffee right. well and and i'm so glad you brought that up because people will ask you know we talk about this being as a type of meditation um i do my practice in the morning first thing before i look at mm -hmm. my cell phone or my mm -hmm. emails or whatever and they're like how can it be like a form of meditation well exactly because what you're talking about when you're so focused mm -hmm. on one thing and the rest of the world just kind of you know disappears and you're in that flow that's what um that's that's the key to making it a really enjoyable practice is when you get like that and okay. um it does it so yeah that's awesome that makes me think of another question because um i channel stuff and as many people do what i mean by that is i will ask spirit or my guides a question and then i just i get information so then sometimes i can't keep up with what they're telling me it's like the stream of consciousness is coming so fast mm -hmm. um does it matter like if it's messy or like I, I don't really know what i'm trying to ask but it's like um i guess does it matter well you know I, when when you learn the way the letters are what we do as far as the practice goes is you take on two maybe three at the most no more than three even though like go-getters like you and a lot of people out there will say well i can do more because <laughs> i can do this i know i can i want to do the whole damn alphabet tonight <laughs> i know it i know it and um and that literally can bring chaos onto a person because it's like learning soccer football and tennis in one day so when you talk about that it's like you know when you're working on that one letter let's say you're working on that a yeah you're very intentful and you're very mindful of what the declaration of intent is which you know um it's it's spiritual stardom it's it's letting your spirit be center stage and when you're writing that you're thinking that so it becomes that red flag and every time you see that letter you think of the declaration and you're very purposeful about how you form it then when you go to your free writing page if you want to and it's like just just when you come to that a you're really going to pay attention and then everything else you get to free form and um and so to answer your question the practice part of it can be a little bit like we're we're really trying to be um very intentful on how we form this mm -hmm. but the free writing part you know you get to you get to to relax and just do it to do it for fun and sometimes you know yeah. when you like i have everyone do a practice page i'm like just write, just go for it, have it be messy, have it be whatever you're feeling right then and there. And then you can hear what I have to say and you can choose, you know, wow, I see that my handwriting does really lean back to the left. You know, am I, do I feel like I'm holding back or mm -hmm. maybe that's something you want to change. And then when you're doing your writing, you're like, oh, I'm gonna <laughs> have it straight okay, out. So that now the more I'm learning about it, it totally makes sense. So it's not like, cause yeah, I would totally be that one. Like, I just want to learn the whole alphabet. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so that makes sense. You literally are focusing on a, a few at a time and you're mastering that. And I can see as you're describing it, Shannon, yeah. I can totally understand because I have been a journaler and a meditator for many years, mm -hmm. the power, you're basically affirming the intention of the letter. And so it's like translating into your physiology and you're affirming it and you're sending it out to the universe. Yeah, that's crazy crazy good stuff. Yeah. And, and not only that, um, there's other things too, that go along with it. There's lots of aspects to the writing that I don't even get into all of them because sometimes that can be too much information yeah. for people, but like even the color pen you use, mm. you know, Vimla has, there's every letter has a color and I just, <laughs> have my, I have my turquoise pen here, which I always write with turquoise or purple usually. That's and my favorite um, color. Yeah, well, turquoise is the color for the letter M, and the letter M is divine grace. Mm. And it's like uh, divine grace, it's I give up the need to control. Divine grace fuels my life. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, anyways, depending on the color you want to use, um, you know, she really recommends that we don't use black ink if we can help it. We want a color that has a high vibration, and colors have vibrational value to them. And, uh, 
you know, it just doesn't, and even just what you like, you know, what, what are you drawn to? Yeah. What color you, love? you don't really have to know what color your letter is, but there, um, there's some cool stuff. That is so cool. Okay, now I want to honor this person who asked the question, but let me see if there are other questions here. Um, because I was talking about how every letter has this declaration of intent and they have meaning. And so um, Tina wanted to know what, what is the power of her name? And she spells her name T-Y-N-N-E, -N -N -E, mm -hmm. but it's pronounced Tina. Yeah. So well, what would you say about that? Well, you know, and when we talk about the power of our names, which is huge for all of us an individual, and it's the, to me, it was the exciting, exciting stuff that we started with. Um, every letter has meaning, um, but that first letter, that first initial of your name holds the power. It's like a key to the pathway, your gift to share with the world. Um, so for her, it would be the T. And those other letters are awesome and wonderful and she'll want to know what they mean, but there's the support of letters. Mm -hmm. But that T is the letter of the visionary. And it's, um, it's I am making the, the world a better place. And the really cool part about the letter T, so the uppercase T looks a lot like a printed T, you know, it's just printed. It's the lowercase T. It, it's crossed in the Vimla alphabet at the top, not midway down, like we were all taught, be mediocre, be like everybody else, cross your T's halfway down, don't stand up you know, above the crowd. And it's no, cross those lowercase t's on top. And once you do it, you see that as a bar for how you see yourself in the world, you won't be able to go back. Um, I'm getting angel bumps. This is wild stuff. Yeah, yeah it really is. And, you know, it's funny because um, once you hear that too, you know that it's this bar of how you see yourself. Yeah. I literally like will get a stomach ache if I cross my T's lower. I'd be like, oh, wait, how, how did that happen? What was I thinking? And you can see, you know, I'll look back at handwriting when I talked in the podcast about the hard time I went through when my daughter was sick. Hmm. And I worked at my husband's insurance agency. We have an insurance agency and I worked there very part time and I sent thank you letters. <laughs> that was my job. And so I would write inside the files sent letter or sent thank you letter. And in 2010, when I was feeling as low as I could feel, I look back now and literally those double T's in the word letter scraped the bottom of the zones of the letters. I mean, I had no idea what the things meant. I didn't know what it meant. And I look back now and I just think, oh, that's exactly how I felt. Wow. So when you look at your handwriting, people ask me too, like, I see that I have handwriting different at different times in my life or when I'm going through different things because it's a reflection of, of what we're thinking. And, and you know, that subconscious mind, it's how we see ourselves in the world and how we see the world around us. It's not how it is, it's how we're filtering yes. it and how we're seeing it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's powerful to be aware of that, so powerful. Let me see if there's another question. Um, but I can't find you, hold on. She's wanting to know on my personal page um do you want to share i think it's so powerful for those who maybe didn't hear the podcast the the story of the woman about her mom oh about the changing from printing to handwriting mm -hmm. yes absolutely i think yeah i think this speaks volumes about the potential of what can possibly happen if you're just open to this Right, right. Well, and actually, and I talked to her, it's my stepsister, Heidi, that I was talking about in the podcast. And she said, that's okay, you can say who I am, you know. Aww. But um, so years ago, when I first started doing this, and we were talking about it, she was just mentioning to me how, you know, her mother had died back in 1999. And she just didn't feel like she was able to really grieve or feel the emotions that she thought she should feel because she loved her very much and missed her. She just could feel like this protective, not, she didn't use the word protective, but just, um, you know, this inability to access that heart feeling uh, that she was looking for, even just to release it, to grieve or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I said, well, you know, I know that you print, would you be interested and in consider just going to cursive, just try cursive handwriting, just see what happens because that really accesses. And I, you know, I know what it did because I've been studying it and she did it. And she said, oh my gosh, the first thing that happened was that my kids noticed which was a shock. She goes, I just would write them notes in the morning because I was working and leave them notes before school. And they were like, wow, mom, I love seeing your handwriting. And she's like, oh, okay, you know? <laughs> and then she said, um, within a few days, I think it was, she 
goes, I didn't, I won't say I had a breakdown, but I had a breakthrough that she was in the shower and was just able to grieve like she'd never grieved before and really feel everything um, intensely. And just that it changed everything. She's like, I, I love to handwrite cards now to people and people will say, oh my gosh, I love getting your handwritten cards. And she's like, yeah. And, you know, on the refrigerator, having checks or old notes or anything from her mom, because she can see her and feel her in that handwriting that she has displayed mm. in her house. And it's like, yeah, our essence is in it. It's yeah. It's really, I love that story so much. And I think when you're talking, it's just like, um, it kind of, to me, is like an analogy of, um, of people who are so, for whatever reason, right? Um, they're so buttoned up. They're so afraid of being exposed or being hurt or, um, and so for that reason, they hold their, their, their cards very close to the chest and they don't allow anybody in, right? And so to me, it's like, this transformational handwriting or this way of being is um, a vulnerability in its truest right. form. Mm -hmm. So that you're like, well, let me let me just try this and let me just see what, um, I mean, I'm just thinking like, I always think about the applications of things. I'm thinking of like troubled youth, right? Like how meditation and um, yoga is so helpful because we're giving them tools to be able to deal with all the stressors that no one ever teaches us. Right. Until maybe we have a breakdown or something, but to be able to apply this, I mean, in prisons, like I'm just thinking of all the applications. Right. Right. No, oh, absolutely. And it, it would be, and it's, you know, what it fosters and what it does by connecting that heart energy because because we live in a really, I think, a pretty analytical, like we yes. want to analyze, we want to figure things out, we want yes. to analyze. And this isn't about analyzing or figuring it out. It's about um, tapping into that part inside of you and letting your heart flow and letting really, um, for like you were saying, for schools and stuff where we're taught to type and all these things, it is just, it's such a tool for peaceful thinking. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing and it would do amazing things. And for people, when I teach the class, I love hearing people say, you know, it doesn't take, and I tell this to people, I'm like, it doesn't take 40 days, even though it's done in 40 day sessions, right? Because 40 days is the time for transformation, in virtually all mm -hmm. um, traditions and things like that. Like it doesn't take 40 days for you to feel the difference. It yes. takes 40 days to actually realign the neurons in your brain and to make it something that's more permanent but it doesn't take 40 days to feel the difference. So like you say, <clears throat> you know, just starting with whatever cursive handwriting program you were taught or you know, if you're a printer, slowly ease into it because it is real and, and we will fight. And like you said, your, your hand hurt or, or it was difficult. Um, Vimla actually, when I took her classes suggested that printers don't jump right into cursive, that they do it real slowly, you know, just start collecting a few, a few um, letters here and there and, mm -hmm maybe do a word or two and, and things. And, and this is all about, you know, being really gentle with ourselves because it's such yeah. a nurturing program that we're, um, it's a tool for nurturing our souls. Mm. And it's like, anytime I go into judgment and I always speak about what I did because I was like trying to get it figured out, trying to get it figured out. And I had to wear an ACE bandage on my wrist for a while. Cause I was trying to do my ligature, my SH ligature so much and so perfect that literally I was using my left hand because my right hand was hurting so much. And um, it will fight, our subconscious mind will fight the change because it, it likes the way things are. <laughs> and it just, you yeah. know. Yeah. So the cool thing is that we're in Minnesota and people may be watching this live or they may be watching the replay or they may have heard the podcast is that people, um, they don't have to pick up and move somewhere. You don't even have to get on an airplane. People can access this sacred magic through the Zooms machine. Yes. So tell us, um, there's something coming right up in the next little bit. So tell us when people, if they're like, okay, so where do I sign up? How do they sign up? Where do we go? Tell us all the magic. All right. Well, I have a website that is the choices yours, LLC.com. And on my website, I have an um, upcoming events page or column. And there I list the two classes that I'm offering for December. 
And I'm going to offer a class, or I am offering a class this coming Saturday, the 5th at 10 a.m. and the following Saturday, the 12th. That's one option. You know, we do an online Zoom small group class, and I like to keep the numbers limited so that it can be a little more intimate and people have a chance to be heard. So um, I'm doing that. And then I offer, you know, individual classes or if people want to get their own group together, uh, I, I try to make it really affordable so that everyone can do it and get their guidebook. It's included in the cost of the class is this guidebook that I had written and Vimala published for me called The Choice is Yours, which has all these cards in the back that show every letter and how to form them. And then I talk about each letter and what the quality is. And, and this is, you know, I created this to go with my class. So it's, um, I usually hand them out, but doing everything on Zoom, I have to mail them in advance. So I also need mailing addresses, but yeah, I'm open, you know, I'm very open to doing it. However, it works for the pe for people and uh -huh. contacting me through my website or via email or text message, whatever is easiest. Let me see. For some reason, I'm, um, let me see, let me see, let me see. I don't know why she's having a crime. Okay. Weird. Anyway, um, so let's let people know if, if for some reason you can't find this or you see the replay, totally pose your questions in the comments. And um, I will, I will, Shane and I will, you know, get back to you or answer your questions. Um, I could totally see this as a, such a fun gift um, because listen, we could all use a diversion, <laughs> especially as the holidays are coming and so, so plenty of people are suffering and struggling so it's like this would be such a fun thing to do like I don't know as a family like for some reason I'm feeling like a bunch of women getting together but obviously this is open to whoever wants to sign up right yeah oh absolutely I've I've had uh, lots of not a lot but I've had men and that as well who really yeah. enjoy it and love it yeah Absolutely. So um, let me see if there's but yeah, the kids, else. yeah, children. You know, it's so great for um, teenagers, young kids. There's just and and everyone can do it differently. You know, little kids can trace the letters and just kind of learn how to write it, and and um, it just it has a different value for everybody. So it's it's awesome. So um, let's let's wrap this up with this question. Um, what has practicing and learning and now teaching this sacred technology done for you? Oh, wow. Well, yeah, it's, um, you know, it's been a complete blessing to my life. Uh, obviously, I love it. Um, you know, I think what, if I had to say one thing that it's really done, and I think of Marianne Williamson, I don't, I'm sure you know who she is and she does the course of miracles and return to love and all these things and she talks about how a miracle is really a shift in perspective this has given me the gift of perspective in every single aspect of my life mm -hmm. i can't say there's only one area that it's touched um it's touched everything and and really makes everything seem miraculous because of of the awareness and the shift in perspective seriously perspective is everything yeah. And to me, perspective means, what does perspective mean to you? Just seeing things, you know, from, I, I want to think of the letter I actually represents unclouded perception. And one of the declarations of intent, and, and when I say the word God, I don't mean a religious God, because this isn't about a religion. This is an amazing thing for people who have a religion or, or don't have a religion it doesn't matter it's soul-based and quality-based and love-based and it's um uh, unclouded perception i see as god sees and love as god loves and it just makes you want to see everything from a non-judgmental um, stance mm -hmm. whether it's someone giving me a criticism or a critique or you know like you were saying that the clinking of the coffee you know no matter how small it is or how big it is it gives me that uh, you know, just that different per perception of, you know, well, what's going on in their life, maybe that why they said that instead of mm -hmm. getting my feelings hurt or getting offended, or, you know, I, I don't know if I'm explaining myself very well right now. You are, but yeah. It does. Um, it just makes things more clear. And I see it from a just a non it really has taken away judgment, which is what I wanted for myself. I wanted to not feel judged. And I wanted to not judge mainly myself more than mm -hmm. others. It was it was me. And it really, that's the perception is of non-judgment. 
That's so beautiful. And again, I keep going back to that. I'm such a visual person. So like the fence around the heart for people who are so tight and so afraid, you know, like how practicing this, it's literally like massaging the heart, the organic heart and like softening. It's like a softening, mm -hmm. allowing like the self-compassion and the, and the lack of judgment, right? Because when we're judging ourselves, all we're doing, or, or when we're judging another person, we're just judging ourselves and that's how it's being projected so well and we have you know they talk about the inner child and I always think of this as like nurturing that inner child yes so it's um which you know I didn't really ever think about or know about before I started getting into metaphysics and things like that but mm -hmm. it's really something that most of us are pretty mean to ourselves you know we, yes. we are say things like how could you why were you stupid why'd you do this da, da, da. And it makes you aware of that little voice. And pretty soon you, because you're an observer, you start to have power over it and you start to snuff it out. And um, so the awareness, the perspective mm -hmm. equals power, you know, really powerful changes that happen. And it just spills out into every area of your life. And I've had really cool things show up like this house that we found on this little lake in the Minneapolis area. I've, I've always, my husband and I have always wanted to live on a lake and, you know, for whatever reasons and it's too expensive or this or that. And all of a sudden we literally walked up and saw a little sign that said house for sale down this dirt road, which he loved. It feels like we're up in Brainerd or wherever. And, um, you know, things like this that we, I was asking for and writing about. And so it's his, you know, it's, People will call it the law of attraction, call it what you will, but Vimla says there is a law of magnetism that happens when, that you generate when you pick up your pen and write, you literally attract and magnetize things to your life. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, you know, just talking about obviously um, things that you can pick up and feel and touch. I'm talking about energy and confidence and all that that non-tangible stuff that really matters most, <laughs> but it is, it does. It's, it's powerful. And you won't know it till you pick up your pen. Cause I can talk all day long, but yeah. unless it works for each individual person. Right. Yeah. It has to be applied. I yeah. can't wait to see how this ups my manifestation manifestation game. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to see if there are any questions here. Well, and you know, I'm going to apologize right now because I have a feeling because I'm new to this and I, I'm the first one to say I'm not a very good Facebooker. I'm not on it very much and things that um, I put the link on my Facebook and I'm wondering if this is going on there. So we might have questions after when I go and allow it to go through because I don't know why I have that set up that way. But sure. cool. Let me see. OK, so thank you, Shannon. Yeah. Thank and you, Elizabeth. It's been awesome. And I so appreciate um your support and interest in all of this and it's been a blast of course it's my pleasure and my honor to share your magic with the world so let me see if i can stop showing this on the facebook machine um so thanks everybody for tuning in we'll figure out whatever the tech glitch is if there is one if you haven't been able to attend live um and we both trust and know whoever is supposed to receive this will absolutely receive it in the most divine timing and so we'll post all the links in the comments and um, okay, so I'm going to stop recording and let me see if 